Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so I'm just here today. I thought I would just flick on the camera really um, to do a kind of process video. But today I'm going to make some cards because um, my supplies are running low. And because I've just got all this craft stuff, I cannot bring myself to buy a card for anybody. It just, <laughs> I just can't bring myself to do it. So what I've done, I've just cut down some just white card that's the size to go inside these envelopes. I think we in the UK call these C, C5 size. Um, I don't know what they would be referred to kind of elsewhere, but um, they're kind of slightly smaller than A4. Uh, so I just made the envelopes out of the way. I mean, A4 would be kind of, oops, you know, if you folded it in half, A4 would be that kind of size so we're kind of talking about a centimeter or so off each edge you know if you put it in the middle so that's the kind of size that um, we're making and as I say I just like to keep a few kind of in just so that if I've got birthdays or anything else I can just literally grab some from my stash so I made one very similar to this for Mother's Day for my mum um, using my um, Prima Ballerina kit so I just thought I'm going to make a very similar one as a birthday card to just have in my stash ready ready to go so I've got this background paper here from the Prima Ballerina kit and all I'm going to do first of all to kind of get started is literally oh, there's that word again just going to use this piece of paper here as my kind of surface to lean on and I'm just going to literally mod podge this onto the card. So I've got my brush here. I mean, obviously this isn't like the cover of a journal or anything, so it doesn't need to be quite so covered, but I'm using Mod Podge rather than glue because um, I don't like it, you know, when you get like kind of air bubbles where it's not been glued down, you know, um, kind of all around if that makes sense so with Mod, Mod Podge you can just get it a little bit of a better kind of covering over the entire thing and obviously if any kind of isn't really glued down then you can always kind of go back in and just top it up so I'm going right to the edge of the card Oops. this is uh, a little bit of a squash here on my table because got my camera set up kind of balanced as usual let me check that I am in frame and the camera is kind of like stood on top of um, a child's chair and then it's got oops it's got a couple of books piled up on top of it and a box and things like that to kind of give it enough height but obviously that's then overhanging my workspace. So, I mean, I know I've said loads of times, but I mean, my desk really isn't the biggest desk anyway. And then to have kind of half the depth, half the depth taken up with the chair is, um, you know, really doesn't leave an awful lot of space. So I'm just going to cut this down like that. And that's the kind of background that I'm going to use for a card. Like that. So I just thought we'd get started with one really similar kind of to what I made yesterday because it just, it looked really pretty. And, um, you know, I thought, well, that way it can be nice and quick and easy because I've already done one. So I kind of know where I'm going with this. So then what I did with my mum's card. I say that. Now I'm going to be dithering around. Right, let me let me find just the image that I did use for her card. I thought I'd um, put it all to one side, but obviously I didn't. Unless I did. Unless I did. Hold on. Let me double check. Oh, I can't see it part there. Well, this is not a great start to the video, is it? Oh, I put it over here, look, on this side. 
I thought I had tried to be organised, but obviously I've kind of forgotten whether I've put it left or right. Right. So what I did was I literally, oh, there's that word again. I'm completely paranoid about using that word now. I just tore around this one here. So I'm just going to cut it out first you know very roughly and then I'm going to tear around it like that And then all I did was just layered it on some of the background pages. And now, obviously, I've just got lots of scraps from where I've been kind of printing and reprinting until I got the kit right. So, you know, I'm not going to be too fussy about which paper it kind of goes on. I'm just going to grab, grab anything, really. So what I might do is pop it on here. This is some of the stationery page. I might just pop it on there. cover that girl up a bit enough to kind of be able to tear around it so I'm just going to pop it onto there like that actually I might have a dark piece from where I kind of then darkened it up because it was quite pale so I kind of darkened it so here we go that's better that's a better match because uh, that first sheet was slightly pale so then literally oh stop using that word so I'm going to stick, see, I, see what I did there, I just managed to miss out the, uh, literally, I'm going to just stick this just with now the wet glue. Now I've had a pin in here, I unclogged it before the video, this is a brand new tube, I, I've only just opened it and for some reason Sometimes you get those tubes that just don't really want to kind of work, don't you? This is one of those tubes because I've used it twice, I think. So it's a really full one. It's the smaller size to what I normally get. So, but they didn't have any of the size that I normally get. So um, it's a bit aggravating that it's already clogging up. Right, and I'm going to just glue that on, covering up the ballerina that was kind of underneath there, just so she can't see her. Like that. And then I just grab my Oh this is turning out to be a nightmare video, isn't it? It's uh, literally only just switch the camera on. Already there's been several disasters just really wanted to come on and do a video because I have been really busy. Um, I won't bore you kind of with my, my daily life, but I've been really busy and um, I'm kind of trying to be really focused, doing kind of admin -y things. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love, you know, the crafting, I love the making, I love you know reading the comments and all of that stuff I don't love kind of having to kind of you know pack up the stuff for posting take things to the post office you know write emails all that kind of stuff so kind of um and there just seem to be emails sometimes in multiple places and then I miss them and oh it all gets very complicated so that's that so I've been really good this morning anyway and I've been catching up with loads of things and you know those kinds of things so I just thought I need to now have a break because um there's only so much of that stuff that I can do so you know in one hit so I thought I know I'm gonna go and have a bit of fun have a bit of a play around play make some cards which is you know something I've been kind of needing to do for a little while because every time that 
it's somebody's birthday or um you know i sometimes need like a thank you card or you know get well or something like that i haven't got any and it's really annoying so uh, this is a good job to kind of do i'm just going around the edge of this card now just in case you missed my launch of this um kit so it's the prima ballerina kit and i'm using here the distress ink pad called victorian velvet this was the one that i used the other day when i kind of did the launch video so hopefully that's gone up before this video um it just seems to complement this kit really nicely so you know and it's quite nice on a card obviously so then what i'm going to do is just literally stop using that word i'm going to take some of the background page with flowers on it and just cut around some flowers so if i just kind of cut in here just keep that to one side because I might want to kind of use other pieces from that paper and these are just um as i say these are kind of just the pieces that i had to keep printing and reprinting until i got the kit kind of right so these have got multiple things you know they've got the stuff on the back so again i'm just kind of using things up really which you know as crafters we kind of love to do don't we and I'm sure I'm not alone in saying I've got so much stuff everywhere that um, I really need to kind of use some stuff up. So this is quite a good way to kind of get through some of it. So I'm just literally, oh, stop using that word. For again, those people who missed it, somebody had counted up in one of my videos and I had used the word literally, literally 34 times. Which, oh my gosh, what a huge number of times I had used that word. Was not aware, obviously, that I was constantly saying, literally. But I certainly am now. <laughs> um, and the other word that I find myself using very often is obviously. Oh, obviously and literally. They're, uh, you know, they must be in my top 20 words that I kind of use. I don't know why. I think they may be just like a, a filler. You know when we say kind of, and I say that all the time as well, and somebody kind of mentioned that in my video the other day. Um, so maybe literally and obviously, maybe they're a kind of, kind of filler as well, I'm not sure. So we've got this one here, which we could kind of stick, there we go again, stick down here, and then kind of, there it is again, snip it off there. So I'm just going to cut around this one. This one is, um, you know, just torn from, I think, probably where I was doing the video the other day on the launch of this kit. And weirdly enough, when I obviously created the kit and, um, you know, did the launch the other day, it didn't even occur, even occur to me that it might be quite nice for cards. And it was only when, obviously, there's that word. Uh, it was only when at the weekend, which this may be now a few weeks ahead because I am trying to get lots of videos done and kind of have them ready. When I came to make the Mother's Day card and I thought, oh, I'm just going to kind of see if, if I can make one with using the, well, I, I didn't know what to use, sorry. And I got to my desk and I thought, oh, might just use some of the bits that I've got laying around from you know from my last craft my last craft session and um, I'm just going to cut this out and see whether this one's look better and it just made the most beautiful card that I thought oh you know actually I'll make a few more of those and kind of keep them in for my ones that I like to just have in the in the box and actually, while I'm um, saying that, what I also thought I might do, and I don't know how much time we're going to get kind of through this video, so it's very doubtful we'll get to this today, but I thought what I might do is actually keep a few cards that are ready-made, but not got anything written on them. 
um, if that makes sense. So that because obviously my daughter, she goes to lots of parties still. So, I mean, kids when they're young, they quite like their age, don't they? Being popped on a card, you know, or maybe their name. So if I didn't have anything on them, when she's going to a party, I could then just come up and grab a card and then stick like a number five, you know, if they're five, or their name or something like that on the card. So I just wondered about kind of doing that. Or, you know, if it were a thank you card, if it kind of was something that would lend itself to, you know, being either a thank you card or a birthday card, I could use that then. So, um, yeah, I'm wondering about kind of doing that. I mean, just keeping a batch of, you know, what do you call it? Un unthemed cards ready to go. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this like this. So first thing I'm going to do is obviously stick this piece on. Like that. And hopefully the glue's playing a little bit better now. Being a bit better behaved. And just stick that on like that. I mean, there's some cards that clearly you wouldn't be able to kind of multi, you know, get away with. But, I mean, for instance, the one that I made on the butterfly, using the butterfly kit, that would be very, you know, easy to use that as a thank you card, a birthday card. Um, you know, it would have a kind of multi multitude of kind of uses, really. Not so sure about this one, but... Obviously, it's definitely a girl's card, but whether or not it could be, you know, thinking of you, get well, those kinds of things, I don't know. But we'll see. So I'm just going to pop this here, and I'm just going to pop it literally, is that word again? Hanging off of the card. Oops. And that way I will trim it off from the edge. I'm just kind of going around the bits that I think are going to be on the card. Doesn't matter if they're not because, you know, it's only going to go on to my piece of paper there. That's just kind of laying behind it. I've got my, my glue, the glue and ink covered tissue now. There, so I'll just dab that off like that. And then, do I want to have just the rosebud, oops, just the rosebud here, or the kind of bigger sprig of flowers? Maybe the big. Let's, let's just go for it and use the big ones. I mean, you can't really see this red around the edge, to be perfectly honest, of these, but... I'm just doing it really for continuity, so just li literally, oh, please stop letting that word. Right, just going to glue this down. Oh, the sun's shining here. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Hopefully, spring is on its way. Would be nice. It makes such a difference when the sun's shining. You just feel so much more, you know, um, like getting up and doing things, don't you? So it's just lovely. Right. Oh, now I've stuck the card onto the piece of paper. Sometimes doing a craft with me is just. Um, just embarrassing, frankly, isn't it? Right, managed to get that off. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is just trim off the overhang here. Looks 
pretty. I don't know if I made a very straight job of that down there, but never mind. As long as it stands up, that's the main thing, isn't it? And then I'm just going to ink around there again, because obviously where we've cut it off now, just so it kind of ties in. So that's that. I'm just going to pop a bit of glue down here because it's coming away again. Hopefully it's all good everywhere else. Just this corner. Oops, and this one now. I clearly didn't do a very good job of mod podging it down today. Right, because I'm kind of rushing so as not to be just boring everybody. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do now, and this is what I did on my mum's card and it looked so pretty. And I have to be honest, I did just use my finger yesterday. So I'm not sure whether this is going to work quite as well using a, a brush but I'm just trying to do things looking a little bit more slick than my usual methods <laughs> so let me just pop the pin back in the oh my gosh having one of those days as well right what I did was I popped on little bits of glitter just in the centre of those roses. I mean, I felt that was all it needed. It didn't really need it kind of anywhere else, but just in those centres looked really pretty and just kind of made it a little bit more, you know, that bit more special. Now, I don't know whether that's going to be picked up on the camera. Possibly won't be, but it looks really pretty in you know in real life in kind of the uh, flesh so I'll just put the lid back on and then what I did before I came on filming again to spare you kind of watching me endlessly I just stamped a couple of sentiments here so I've just stamped some birthday wishes again just on some scraps of the background paper and I'm just tearing around that. Now obviously for the Mother's Day card, I just, you know, just had mum. So I mean, that was nice and small. This is obviously a little bit bigger. So um, when I did mum, I just had it kind of to one side, but I mean, what we could do is kind of have it in two, two pieces. So I'm just, just tear that down a bit more. birthday and then wishes that looks quite pretty and then I just kind of ink it up a bit like this Oops. and then with mum, I just um, layered it up. So again, I'm just going to take, you know, purely a scrap of paper. So I'll just kind of move the card to one side because obviously that glitter is drying. I'll just pop that to one side. I'm not going to be able to find a kind of clear enough piece, I think, on here to be able to use. Well, I could pop that on there. Maybe that one there. Like that. Maybe the other way around. Right. That's, that looks good. So I'm just going to pop that down. Just there. Pop this one down. there so and obviously I realize you know not everybody makes cards so you know of course this video might might have been of no 
interest whatsoever and you know that's fine I obviously don't you know haven't been expecting people to be watching if they're not interested in making any cards but I mean I guess sometimes you know even kind of making a few cards can kind of give you some ideas for some journaling pieces so you know or who knows maybe you're just really bored because there's nothing on telly and you've kind of already watched all the other videos up there um you know on youtube although to be honest i don't know about you guys i find it quite endless because um as i'm watching one another one's kind of recommended and suggested and have an endless kind of stream of things to watch unlike the telly where frequently there is i find nothing to watch but maybe that's just me okay and we've got that one And then we've got this one. Now I might have torn these a little bit big. So we'll have a look in a second. I mean if I have, obviously we can always kind of have a rethink. I'm just going to pop the rubbish in the bin beside me. When I say bin, I mean my carrier bag. Right. So we've got their birthday wishes. You know, and you could have them kind of over there to the side or however you like, really. Um, because the other thing that I did yesterday when I did the Mother's Day card was I also popped some little pearls in the corner, which looked so pretty. So I've got these gorgeous pearls that Laura had gifted me, which actually, weirdly, since doing this video, she had gifted me some more of these, which is fabulous because um, I had been kind of hoarding them because I love using things like this and I not really wanted to um, use them but she's now gifted me some more so I can now use away which is great I think things like this they're really nice to just pop you know kind of on the corner or down the side so what I did yesterday was I just kind of popped them down here so I'm going to pop those on the same today so they are stickers, but I always like to re-glue them because I never really trust, um, you know, stickers and things to actually kind of stick for long. And I can't bear it when, uh, you know, or I would, I would hate it if somebody opened the card and then it was falling apart. So I prefer to kind of have it glued really well. So, you know... Or we maybe, maybe we will have this blank on the front. Actually, that looks quite pretty down there. Maybe I'll have birthday wishes down there. And what we could do, actually, is just dab a little bit of glitter just around the edge. You know, not all over it, but just randomly kind of at the edges. It's quite nice, doesn't it? Oops. There we go. Right. So I'm going to wait for those to dry for a couple of moments. I was trying to put the wrong lid on there. Wait for those to dry for a couple of moments before obviously popping them on. They really will only take a couple of minutes because there's only the tiniest bits, oops, tiniest bit of glitter on there. And that glitter is really good at drying very quickly. And then what I thought we could do, I've just got a rose that I have already kind of cut out, is just inside, inside the card, just pop kind of one of the roses on there because that kind of then just brings the card from the outside in. So I'm just going to, again, kind of ink that up. Just ink it and then glue around. A bit like this, I think. Just again, just it with the tissue so there's any glue coming out you just can't 
attach there. And then obviously it's up to you guys kind of how you do your center. So you could, again, obviously just stamp it or you could use a piece torn out and popped in. And I do veer towards this these days actually rather than stamping onto the card because I think it looks like a little bit more effort's gone into it. Um, you know, that's just kind of me. Now in, a, in an ideal world I probably would stamp something different rather than birthday wishes again. But I haven't actually got um, a nice elegant font if that makes sense. The other birthday kind of greetings that I've got aren't necessarily quite so elegant as that and they look a little bit kind of um, a bit ugly I think for the delicate kind of theme of the card so I'm just going to go with that like that and then what what you could do is obviously you could ink around the edge of the card as well so it's got that kind of pinky kind of tinge inside as well as outside. I mean just little things like that they don't really take two minutes and um, they just make such a difference to how pretty the card then looks you know I think so uh, you know what's a couple of minutes just inking up because it does make quite a difference to the overall effect when you then open the card I think. So that looks really pretty. You could put it down the fold, I guess. You know, I'm not sure whether it necessarily needed it, but you know, I guess then we've got more of that pink, which is quite pretty, isn't it? Obviously, I need to trim this down because it's overhanging at the edge. So uh, I will do that after the video in kind of slower time. Right. Hopefully my glitter pieces are done. Yep. So we can just glue them on now. So, oops. Just take them. Just have one here. And actually, if you can see, I'm kind of not really going too much to the edge because I want them to be a bit raised. So they're kind of a bit sticky outy. So, I mean, that looks so pretty. I'm just going to stand up and see whether you can see it. I hope that that's all kind of coming across on the camera. It looks gorgeous, really, really pretty card. And we use literally nothing other than the kit, except for these pearls. That was it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, that's one card done and dusted. As I say, I will trim this edge piece off um, in a moment, but I will do that kind of off camera where I can be a bit slower and more careful about it. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. And then what we could do, we could just do another one using the more kind of blue toned pieces. So if we kind of cover up the card using more of this kind of blue themed part of the background page so again I'll mod podge that down in place my brush has completely dried out now which um, is a bit of a shame mind right what I might do is um, create a couple of kits with sentiments kind of add-on pieces for you know for making cards that say Happy birthday, you know, best wishes, things like that. Oh, I've got inky fingers now. Um, you know, because actually that would be quite handy to have. So 
I'll keep you posted as to whether I do manage to get those out. Right. So, not sure how well this is going to be. Not very well at this rate. Um, I'm just going to literally kind of pop it down like that. Turn it over. Now, no doubt I have really not done a very good job of this because I'm obviously doing it on camera <laughs> in front of you guys. And of course, as we all know, nothing ever goes well on camera, does it? So um, we'll have to see how this looks in a minute. So I'm just going to trim it off as best I can. So this is the folded side. There, and then here we've got the, you know, the card itself. Like that. Card. I mean, it looks pretty just like that, doesn't it? So, uh, right. I'm going to actually, I'm going to be really rigid and I'm going to bin that because I really need to uh, stop hoarding things. I'm going to get myself a clean piece of paper as my kind of inking up piece so that I'm not getting glue stuck on the card again. So, hold on. These bits of paper that I use, they're literally, they're the pieces of paper that I've been printing on and things like that, you know, while I'm trying to get things right. So they're, li you know, they really are, <laughs> stop saying literally, they really are just, um, you know, now kind of dead pieces of paper that I'm not likely to use. So, uh, you know, they're quite handy for things like this. Just checking what the time is, just just before I kind of take up your whole day. Right, so I'm just going to bring the uh, kit back in. I'm just going to plug my glue up because it does clog up very quickly. And it could even have clogged up already. Oh gosh, can't now get the pin into the end. Hold on. Okay, right. So I'm just having a look through to see if I've got anything kind of bluish to use for this because, um, you know, it would be kind of nice to have a kind of more bluey thing going on. So I have got this one. That's quite nice. So I might go with that. Just move these bits to one side. I wonder my desk is such a mess. Right, so I might use this one here. So again, what I will do is just take the card itself in the first instance. You know, and I mean, again, these cards are probably, you know, they're not the most imaginative kind of cards or anything. But they're just pretty you know, and quite versatile and kind of just easy to have in your stash to be able to grab. So, you know, I mean, there are some absolutely phenomenal cards out there, aren't there? Absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, I know that lots of people do make cards and really stunning, amazing cards. So, you know, of course, I'm not suggesting that these are anything fantastic, but I think they're really pretty and... Um, you know, they're just literally made from odds and ends kind of thing. So, you know, I think they're uh, quite a nice one to be able to just knock, you know, knock a few up and kind of have them then ready to use. So what I'm going to do is just take a couple of the bits from here. Again, this is just some that I've been using. Just, just 
cut some flowers out. I mean, then again, you know, I really like having all the little bits and pieces in the kit to cut out because these are the types of things that I like to have when I buy things from the shops. And I find that it's quite rare that they do have bits like this to cut out. They're normally just literally contained on the background page themselves. And you don't necessarily want to go cutting the background page up to access the flowers or the tickets or, you know, what have you, or the frames, you know. So it's really nice to have um, flowers and, I don't know, the ballerinas and things like that to be able to actually cut them out individually away from the background papers um, you know and I guess with printables even if they're in the background papers it's fantastic to be able to have such an abundance of things because you can obviously print them as much as you like because I don't know about you but when I buy the paper pads which I'm a sucker for a paper pad I have to be honest um, Oh, I end up hoarding it and not really using it because I can't bring myself to use the, you know, maybe the only one of something or, you know, I'll use the first page and often they come with three copies, say. I then can't bring myself to use the rest because I don't want to not have it left, which is ridiculous because we've said before, you know, I could always just actually, you know, rebuy the same paper pad again, but you just don't, do you? So, um... You know, for someone who's inclined to hoard things as soon as they're running low, this is ideal for me. So we've got that like that. And then um, I'm just going to cut out a couple more flowers from, from here. So if I kind of take this corner one, it might or it might not fit in the corner of the card, but we'll see. Obviously the beauty about cutting it from a corner is you've got two straight edges that don't need fussy cutting. So I'll just cut across there. Like that. So we could pop that on there. Right there. And then this one could be kind of poking out here here oops like that something like that maybe um and we haven't obviously layered this up at all so we may want to kind of layer that up as well uh, I'm trying to think what to layer it on for the best because um let's have a look and see about that blue stationery because maybe it would be ideal to pop it on there. And work out how to get it without her kind of showing. Right, unless we have it kind of up here and then hopefully cover this up with a flower. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just glue this down. For the moment, right. Just give up on that for a minute. Glue this down. And then again, I'm just going to kind of, you know, fussy tear it around because, um, you know, I really like that look. one like that and then I'm just going to ink it up a bit with the red around because then that kind of brings in the beautiful colour around the edge of 
that piece itself. It looks like it's kind of the same. And I might go around the edge of the actual card as well. I'm just going around the edge of that. Yes, I think the biggest frustration, I don't know what you guys, you know, what it's like where you are, but where we are, our post office is um, a bit of a nightmare. And I've said this before, but since the post office have kind of closed down most of their main ones, and now they just operate out of kind of individual, you know, your local sort of convenience store. And we have this big sign up saying that the post office is open from 6 till 11. Um, you know, allegedly seven days a week. However, invariably, the post office is closed all the time because you get there and constantly the post office is is closed. It just has um, signs up closed due to sickness, closed due to, you know, overloaded, we can't take any more parcels. It's just kind of one one excuse after another really and it's so frustrating because um you know you kind of go there expecting to be able to obviously post your parcel and then you can't and you know well I don't know quite what's going on I get the impression obviously the staff don't really see why they should have to run the post office I assume and um <laughs> you know therefore they kind of make it as difficult as possible for people to actually use the post office which, you know, as a customer, that's very inconvenient, isn't it? So, uh, but it's, you know, it's been going on for a really long time as well, kind of about three years. So, uh, well, literally ever since they had the sign put up saying, you know, that they were now going to be kind of open all the time as a post office. And there just seems to be this kind of... Uh, muttering amongst the staff that they don't really kind of want to you know it's only one or two members of staff who seem happy to actually man the post office section and the rest of them obviously you know perhaps perhaps the case of where they are not obviously being paid extra money and things like that they don't see why they should um so they kind of near on just refuse to really which is a nuisance because the amount of time that i've obviously gone there and then I've had to come away and, you know, send someone a message apologising, saying, you know, I'm so sorry, I wanted to post your parcel yesterday, but they weren't accepting parcels. And obviously on the weekend, sometimes that's the whole weekend. Because sometimes they've stopped taking them by kind of Saturday mid-morning and they won't then take them again until the Monday. So uh, it's pretty inconvenient, I must, must say. Anyway, there's my bit of moaning for the day. I don't know how it is in other countries, you know, whether you kind of have postal services available all the time, I don't know. But what with that and the cost of postage, which is another issue, you know, um, I do try my very best to charge what the post office charges. Invariably, you know, because it's obviously due to what the dollar rate is and all that type of stuff, Invariably, it should be in your favour. So if anyone's going to pay the odd extra pound, it would be me. The only thing that seems to differ on that score is that Etsy seems to calculate bizarre charges for additional items. Um, which, again, if when I get to the post office, it's vastly different amount to what you've paid, I do try and remember to refund you via PayPal. Uh, I do it via PayPal because that's the thing I know kind of how to use and easily send a, you know, a payment. Um, I don't know how to kind of refund just a portion of the payment on Etsy. I don't even know whether that's a, a feature. Um, yeah, so I do always kind of try and refund if you've overpaid on the postage. But equally, I do try and keep the postage quite re you know, reasonably close to what it is. So if it says $20, the chances are it's £17. You know, if it says it's um, 
$14, the chances are it's £12, that kind of ratio. So, um, you know, unfortunately, that is how extortionate the rates of postage are. Um, you know, and I really sympathise because it obviously, it puts me off buying things myself. You know, I don't buy things because that postage, you know, the postage is often more than the actual item that you're buying, which is such a shame, isn't it? You know, but again, what, you know, what can you do? You can't really kind of do anything about it because unfortunately, <laughs> you know, we need to post the stuff. So, um, it's not like we can kind of boycott the the postal service because actually you know unfortunately we kind of need their service so yeah it's a bit of a kind of shame but I wish somebody would come up with some genius way of um, shipping things around at a cheap rate because it would make a huge difference wouldn't it and sometimes you just think oh gosh they're actually making more than I am you know and I've sat and made the item and packed it up and listed it and put it together and done a video of it you know and then they're they're taking more than the price of the item so you know believe you me I really am <laughs> I really am kind of in sympathy kind of you know I, I do get it because yeah I find it very frustrating myself right gosh I've just been moaning and moaning really today I don't know why I've been moaning so much, but I guess just sometimes these things kind of get to you more than others, don't they? Right, so that's that. So I might just kind of pop a little rose there or something. Okay, just one up there. It's hard to know where to put that rose, isn't it? I'm just going to check whether I've got some other flowers that I could use. Kind of instead. These are my scraps that are kind of sat beside me, but obviously I've got kind of my ones that aren't the scraps, but the you know the proper ones on the uh, the cardstock here. I'll just check whether. Okay, right. Let me check the time. Okay. Oh gosh, we're going up to three to two minutes. Time flies when you're uh, crafting, doesn't it? So I might just pop this down here because, um, you know, obviously time is getting away from us. From us, with us. There we go. Okay. I will pop that one down like that. Oh, it looks so pretty. And then, um, <clears throat> you just pop a little sentiment on. So again, I just stamped some earlier, just onto these kind of scraps here. I don't know whether this is going to work, but I'm going to try popping it on the blue like that and kind of tear that out. And then I'm just going to try and cut around this tiny uni flower. Now, I don't know how neat this is going to look because this is very tiny. So, um, you know, I love fussy cutting, but my gosh, this might be kind of uh, taking it a bit far. So... And what I always find with fussy cutting is quite forgiving because um, sometimes when things are a bit too fussy, you can just cut them off. As long as you kind of still get the basic shape. For instance, that little flower here, if you can see that, I just didn't include that because that would be a very vulnerable piece to be kind of flapping around. So I just cut that off and I don't think you'd be too 
you know, too aware of it. So, okay. Now, what I'm trying to do with these cards is keep them quite flat so that when they're in the envelopes, they're not bulking the envelope out too much. And hopefully we have kind of achieved that. So, um, you know, I love all those flamboyant cards and things. We made a couple at Christmas, um, if you recall, and they were lovely. The thing is, I tend to give my Christmas cards by hand. I mean, I actually don't really very often give Christmas cards, to be fair, um, anymore. But if I do, they tend to be kind of, by, you know, by hand, really. And... Um, well, the same as birthday cards really but I'm trying to keep them quite flat so I haven't included any lace or sticky out kind of bits or anything like that I'm just literally keeping them kind of flat so I'm just going to now ink this one up Oops. just got that one there I can't like it down there and then I've got these teeny bit of flowers and again we'll just ink around the edges just for a bit of continuity there we can kind of have that just there or maybe it doesn't even need that but actually it looks kind of cute because it looks a bit like it's poking out then doesn't it so I'm going to glue these down like that and then I just want to kind of check that I've got enough room there to glue these on so I'm just moving them slightly I mean that's the beauty of using wet glue as opposed to hot glue which then is uh, you know not flexible at all it's fantastic for obviously speed because you know things are kind of instantly stuck down but it's not fantastic with regards to you know moving things around right oh how pretty does that card look and then what we could do is just like we did with the other one is just pop a bit of glitter in those flower centers and obviously because I haven't got so many roses on here I'm going to just pop it on the in the middle of the blue ones so just kind of where the yellow the kind of pollen bits are just pop some glitter there I mean obviously you don't even have to use the glitter but I just think the glitter kind of adds a little bit something special here like that okay oh that looks so pretty so that's that and then actually what I'll do I think is as per the other one I might just add a little couple of the pearls just down the top edge because I really like the look of that or we could have little diamantes actually let's have a look hmm, the diamantes look quite pretty don't they oh pearls or diamantes maybe the diamonds so uh, again oh these aren't these aren't kind of a strip like the pearls were pearls kind of seem to be stuck well that's fine we'll just stick them down one at a time so just pop a dog of glue there pop that one on there take the next one pop a dog of glue there And I, we've got room above that, have we? Just dab a bit of glue there. Pop that one on. Oops, not there. Oh, that looks so pretty, doesn't it? Right, so that's that one. And then, <coughs> excuse me, my... Uh, <clears throat> my throat's getting dry now from uh, too much talking well too much moaning today really so then what you could do is um, just pop some flowers on the inside so I mean here I've got this big sprig so 
<clears throat> again I'm going to cut the rose off because otherwise it's going to be too big inside that card so what I'll do is just trim around and then I'll decide in a second once I've trimmed it down whether I actually want these ones or not so put that in the bin These are um, obviously not so forgiving when they're in such a large size because uh, you can clearly see where <laughs> where the jagged edges should should be and shouldn't be and you know what have you so um, it's a little bit more fiddly weirdly it's more fiddly when they're large but purely because your need for precision and care is kind of more than it is when they're small if that makes sense right nearly done and obviously I mean this is not necessary at all this is just um, you know something I think is kind of fun to do to um, decorate the card inside so you know don't feel that this is something you have to do. I just think it's kind of cute because it kind of brings the outside in. So, as you can see, this is quite large for in that card. Well, we could have it on that side, actually. So what I'm going to do is trim around here and kind of halve it, really. Like that. So as I can just have it kind of here. So I'm just going to ink it up a bit. Oops. Like that. And then I'll just glue that down. in there like that just mop it up Make sure it's kind of um, glued down but without the glue seeping out everywhere and then you know again completely up to you but I'm going to just ink around again the edges I mean what you could do is just even ink just around the kind of corners you know, if you would prefer. But just so you've got kind of a bit of interest kind of on the inside of the card. Looks really pretty, doesn't it? And for some reason I've now got things stuck all over here. Right. Um, and then I'm just going to stick down my very last birthday wishes, which again I stamped on this one. So again, if I just kind of tear around that, like that, and just tear it around. And actually this one's quite handy because I had stamped this on some that's got some blue as well. So just flukily, you know, ended up that way. There we go. So I'll just ink along the edge and then that's it all done so again really 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 pretty and you know all made completely with the kit you know again the only thing that we added was the little diamantes in the corner so you know just kind of a couple of ideas of other ways to use the kits I guess really um, I mean I'm not saying all of them would work for cards 
it just flukily. I just thought this one did. Um, but I am going to have a play around with the other ones and see if the others, you know, kind of do as well. So, um, yeah, just kind of something else to kind of give a bit of a try to. So, hope that you had fun. Hope that um, the video was <laughs> vaguely of interest. And I will catch everyone later. Thanks for watching then. Bye.